What is up? What is up, my beautiful, beautiful friends? This is Patrick Allman here from Stop Doing Nothing. And today we are going to be talking about how to use a, a high level. I can't want to say go high level. I believe the product name is high level. Correct me if I'm wrong. To and, and the process of setting up a blog and making it very SEO friendly. And you know, everything I do video wise, content wise for the high level community is based off of a question. So if you, today is uh, what, April 3rd. So if you look inside the Facebook group, somebody was asking about is go high level um, uh, SEO friendly. And the comments range from no, it sucks balls to someone like me that says, oh, give me a break. It's just fine because Google loves HTML no matter what. So let's talk about that a little bit. A couple of things before we get into this, because you know I get down and dirty pretty fast. Uh, number one is I do not work for high level. I do not represent them or their opinions. This is all me. This is you know verbal knowledge, SEO diarrhea dribbling out of my ears. So uh, don't um, you know? Don't take anything I say as being the official word on things. I'm just a guy who's been in marketing for a few decades, and I have a good idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, number two. Every time you don't subscribe on YouTube, a butterfly loses its wings. And I know we all love butterflies and we do not want them to lose their wings. So please make sure if you like the content, because I have a whole high level playlist on YouTube. If you like that stuff, um, watch some of those other videos and I've always, you know, I would like to subscribe. That's the social currency we're exchanging here. And number three is I would never claim to be an SEO expert. I probably can get you know 70 or 80 percent of the way there, which to me for most things is is pretty good. Uh, for my clients, we we mainly focus on paid traffic. You know, I like buying intent uh, in Google Ads, and I like uh, Facebook uh, Facebook ads. So I really do love the paid traffic world, but I do realize that some people number one can't afford uh, paid traffic, and also sometimes. You know, SEO and paid traffic work well together. I mean, if you pay for ads, you don't get better SEO. But, you know, if you can rank well for free traffic and paid traffic, I mean, you've, you've got the whole thing covered right there. So those are those three things right there. I do not represent high level. Uh, give me some social currency. Follow on YouTube. Uh, and also comment. I want to know which parts of these videos were useful and which parts were, you know, a complete waste of your time. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, you see in front of you high level. This is a product you use every day for anything like me. And this is my training instance. If you are an agency and you don't have a training instance, please make sure you get one. It's just another session. It's just another, um, you know, another sub account where you can break stuff all day long and you don't have to worry about you know, leaving bad custom variables or having a messy setup. Plus it really comes in handy for what? for training clients and for doing videos, demo videos like this. So what we have here is a pretty basic high level account. This is what I'm building out more and more with more examples as I run into different clients who hire me and either want me to come to an event and speak and talk about marketing or people who hire me remotely and they wanna learn about a certain detailed skill. So it's always good to have a training instance here. So in here, in the training instance, I have a website called Training Main Website. And this is, uh, I use one of their templates there. And this website came with, I believe, uh, uh, six pages, and I've added my blog page here on the sixth one. So what's step one of setting up your blog, okay? Uh, and this is the entire thing is not about S setup, it's mainly about the SEO part of it, but just bear with me. So if you've never set up a blog before inside of High Level, um, you know, it's obviously right here underneath blogs. Now this says blogs, this is misleading. You get one blog. This should say blog posts, okay? One of the things I really wish High Level would have, and I hope it's in the idea list, and hopefully you'll agree with me, is I actually wish there was a way to have multiple blogs. Unfortunately, there's only one, which makes it kind of hard to convert, you know, lots of sites off of WordPress that have blogs because for, you know, everyone has, you know, one site, and uh, some people may have multiple sites, but but in if you want to manage multiple things in a domain, you only get one blog. Yes, you can divide them up by category, but that is not, not a really good idea. So hopefully someday this will actually represent the fact that you can have multiple blogs versus this really meaning blog posts is what this means. So here you can see I've created a blog post. Let's go to the blog post real quick and see what I did here, okay? Most of the work I did for you already ahead of time. I'm going to go on the blog post, and this one here is about why cats are better than dogs. Why do I have to say that? Because I'm legally obligated because I married my wife and she loves cats. So a very basic post in here. It's got an image. Um, the content is an outline. I use the AI generator over here someplace to generate this outline. Um, you know, it's, it's really basic. It's, it's the text kind, of, text kind of stuff right here. So when I come back over here to the list of blog posts, 
um, you can see I have category and I've got it. It's updated by Patrick Allman right here. Your category management and your updated by management are up here underneath a little gear thing. Um, you can see your authors, which I am one of them, and your categories right here. And in categories, you have complete control over the cats versus dogs, the labels, the images, the SEO, the category name stuff right here, okay? This category URL is a little bit misleading because that only ends up as a C. So high level isn't perfect. You're gonna see issues like you do see every now and then a high level, but you can have a category here and you can have one or 100 categories here. It doesn't matter, right? So that's all SEO friendly. And then let's come over here to the authors and over in my author profile, I can you know list all my social profiles. I can put in an image here. I wonder, do I have an image handy? Let's look at my, let's look at my downloaded files and see if I have a picture of me just being myself uh, pretty handy here. Oh, let's go over to my downloads folder. Let's go find a picture of Patrick. Here we go. I always like this one and it's a square one, which is good. Is it going to upload? Let's go with that. Okay, good. Now I have an, an image for my author text right here. And of course, for SEO purposes and for ADA purposes, uh, screen readers, we always want image alt text also. So you get a pretty good basic profile right there that's going to show up in the bottom of your blog post. Okay. And of course, you have an RSS feed here also. So let's go back to our list of blog posts. So once you have some active blog posts up and running, um, you have to connect this obviously to a website. And so what I did over here on the website is I created a blog page uh, under my main training website right here. And uh, where's my blog page at the blog page? And I dropped in, uh, I think Patrick. Uh, oh, I dropped in the blog widget. Now, of course, you don't get a lot of options here. You can pick what categories show up here, which is gonna come in really handy if you're someone who really wants to build a good SEO structure where you build out your parent pages. And then for each of the parent pages, you can kind of pick which categories go on there right there. And of course, you can do a big kind of three block pattern or a three list pattern right here. Okay, pretty basic stuff, right? Stuff you see in SEO every single day. So. Uh, like all things on a website, uh, and this one I did leave blank on purpose, when you're building a website, you have to use SEO best practices. And if you do stuff like fill in the SEO meta information, you're covering the vast majority of what Google looks at on a site. So over here, we can say the cat v dog website. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything here when it comes to getting that ready. Author, of course, is going to be one Mr. Good Looking Patrick Almond. Uh, social image right here. Uh, we're going to pick that one right there. And then down here, you can update some other information about the site, especially canonical links and English uh, language of the site, which is used in the HTML. So getting the very basics um, done of the SEO right here is pretty easy. But that's not people what people want to know. Uh, a lot of SEO comes from content creation and writing blog posts. So let's hop back over here. Uh, well, first of all, how does how do the blog posts look? So here's the actual demo website. I'm going to go to my blog right here. It's going to take me to the page, which I have titled with the URL Animal Blog. And be, of course, since I selected the big giant uh, you know, block layout three across, I get this right here. Um, I'm kind of curious sometimes as to why, how they calculate the read time right here. So they, I clicked on the link and in here, you know, I've got all my standard content and I've got my category I can look at right here. Now, you know, one of the big questions is, you know, is, um, is high level uh, SEO friendly? And to me, the things that I go to see to whether or not something's SEO friendly is I, um, is, all, uh, is first of all, I'm going to hop into the HTML here. And I'm going to take a look at the meta information at the top. All this stuff right here, the OG information, the title is important for meta. It's there. The open graph title is there. The description's there. So all the things that are really heavily picked up, like the things that Yoast would evaluate inside of, um, inside of WordPress, are picked up just fine. And here's even your image right here. And of course, your OG, your open graph image right here. And of course, it even knows the open graph type is blog, yada, yada, yada. So it, it does add the open graph, uh, the open graph uh, tags right there. There are probably some more advanced open graph tags that aren't in there, but either way, it adds them just fine. Uh, something that, you know, high level doesn't do, which I wish it did, is it doesn't let me SEO the name of the file here. I'm really not sure that matters. My alt text is good. 
uh, the image is appealing and the text around is SEO friendly. So I'm not really sure that the file name matters so much. I think uh, Yoast over at SEO, if this were a WordPress thing, it would evaluate, it would look at the uh, image of the, uh, the file name image, excuse me, the name of the image. Boy, you know, five eggs will make you talk like a, like a speed demon, right? But all the stuff that I would normally look at in a client's um, blog post or when uh, we're looking at a prospect, uh, all the SEO friendly stuff is there. So hop back over here on the blog post. You're reading the blog post. One of the things that High Level doesn't have, which I wish it didn't, but I can do it manually, is there's no easy way for me to have a category list on one side or the other. But you know what? I could very easily make this a one-third, two-third page or a half-half page and just manually build that there. So that's not there either. But one of the things that is cool is I can go over to my category page right here. So this is my category page. Uh, you can tell it's the category page because you use slash C there. And then when you're actually in your blog post itself, um, you know, you have the slash C for the category up in the URL and then slash B for the blog post. So that's what they're using right there to build those. So I've got my main website, which is SEO friendly. I've got my blog page, which is SEO friendly. I've got my blog post, which to me is pretty SEO friendly. And I've got my blog category, which is very SEO friendly. Now, what else would Google be really happy with when it came to SEO? Google Search Console is your standard for Google and how well things are indexed inside of your site. So if I hop over to uh, my domains, let's hop out of the editor here, and let's hop over into the domains for the website and make sure that we have a sitemap generated. So under settings and domains, we're gonna go to my, uh, my training domain right here. By the way, don't freak out because this is on a subdomain. Somebody in Facebook was commenting, well, you can only run blogs on a subdomain, which screws up your SEO. No, you can run a blog on a main domain. I've got my agency blog on a main domain. This is just a subdomain I used for training, so I didn't have to buy a whole training domain. So uh, keep your pants out from getting in a wad, okay? So there's my training domain, uh, and here's where I generate my XML sitemap generate and save, and then let's hop inside the sitemap, which I already have up right here. So I've got um, my category URL right here, last model today. I've got the uh, blog post um, by itself. Now I'm not quite sure why High Level does this, but I've got the blog post by itself URL, and the blog post under the category, which is what I really want. So to me, uh, to me, this might end up in a duplication of content. You know, Google is only Google is really happy when you only list a page one time in your sitemap. So this isn't a huge, huge deal. I mean, oh no, my page is gonna get indexed twice, or oh no, I might get a small penalty for duplicate content. But this one, again, is not a big deal. You can tell the sitemap is correctly formatted and was generated okay. So I've got a working sitemap. So let's close that out. And if I hop over into Google Search Console right here under sitemaps, you can see that my sitemap was added correctly and it was uh, scanned correctly for 10, for 10 pages. Now I just added this today, April 3rd. So I don't have any indexing information for you yet, but I can tell you on a different website when I was playing with my, my main agency website and I put up a test blog post about cats versus dogs, this morning I was inside of the Google Search Console and that blog post showed up. I was screwing around. I totally forgot that Google indexes everything. So my blog, my accidental blog post or my test blog post from a different website showed up just fine. So there's the basics of SEO right here. You have control over the alt information on the images. You have control over the, um, you know, over the URL, uh, the URL structure. Let's go hop back over here to the blog posts. You have control over the URL structure. And, and the reason my opinion is that, that Google is very um, very friendly to high-level blogs is that uh, Google and the search engines, let's not pretend that's the only search engine, they pay attention to the output. They're not really too concerned about what tool generates the input. I've said it before and I will say it again, that yes, WordPress has really cool plugins like Yoast, which will sit there and evaluate you know, your blog post title. It'll look at the URL. It'll look at the density of the text there. It'll look at... Um, It'll look at all kinds of other things inside as you're building your blog post to tell you whether or not it's SEO friendly. But at the same time, I've seen videos from Google saying, don't focus too much on making sure your website is SEO friendly. 
focus on making sure that it's useful, okay? And the way you do that, in my opinion, is just making sure that all the basics of SEO are taken care of and High Level does that beautifully. It's not WordPress, and if you're coming from WordPress, it's gonna take some getting used to. Here's some other advice I would have, let's hop over to one of my other blog posts right here, is if you have a site that is well indexed on Google and you are thinking about moving it to go high level, consider just keeping the blog where it is. If you rank well for some for certain keywords and those keywords bring you relevant traffic and that traffic is you know paid, you know traffic that will eventually get you paid because they will buy something for you, do not up and move your blog. Moving a blog, moving content in general is a pain in the ass if you're an SEO freak because everything has to be just perfect. Um, can it be done? It 100% can. But on one of my other blog po one of my other blogs, for example, I have a couple of hundred blog posts. Uh, they've got videos and better. There's layouts that are already done in Divi. So I'm probably not going to be moving that one anytime soon. Um, and let me see what else was I going to say. Oh, obviously, you know, it's not it's not perfect. But let's back up, back over here into the builder right here. Um, one thing that I really do wish I could do though is take these categories and get that list on the on the sidebar there. So um, yeah, if you're if you're starting a brand new blog, I would say high level is uh, in is, is a great place to do it. It really is. Uh, you have all the SEO stuff knocked out. Um, uh, you know, start the brand new blog. Oh look, I got to fill in some stuff down there. Um, get you know get started with the the, the blog. Um, right now, I don't have any indexing information. That'll probably be a future video to show how well things get indexed because I just created the sitemap for this video and submitted it here. But um, you know, we could always do a URL inspection right here. Let's do that. Let's look at the URL inspection and see what Google says about this particular blog post. So right here, what is URL? What is? Uh, oh, dang it, Patrick! Why did I do that? That's oh. How'd you add that? That's not a sitemap, Google. You idiot. Of course, it's not going to work. Ugh. Okay. URL inspection. I can do that up here. Can't even believe Google took that as a sitemap. That was kind of stupid of it. So let's see real quick what Google says. It's going to go to retrieve from the index. It's not in Google. I'm going to request indexing. Do not do this too often, okay? Um, Google will find your site as long as the sitemap submitted. And um, even if it's not submitted, Google just crawls everything. It's hard to block Google from getting all up in your website business. So this is going to be the first of a couple of videos. Um, once things start getting indexed and I start getting numbers over here in performance, uh, I'm treating this like any other client for, for you guys so you guys can see the evolution of this. I will come back and I'll post more videos. But if you have some questions about SEO, do me a favor, post a comment uh, below this video, preferably on YouTube because it'll be easier to find. But I just want to know your take on why you think that it's uh, either it's, you think it's a horrible SEO tool or you think it's a perfectly fine SEO tool. Like I said, it you, you know a lot of the stuff that we do in business and marketing, um, it, it goes by the rule of 80-20. You know, if you get if you get the eighty percent of it done, you're you're good to go. You don't have to worry about too much, probably about canonical names and you know SEO friendly image names, things like that. You, you don't have to worry about them. They aren't going to make that much of a difference. SEO to me, SEO is you know a hundred levers, and what go what high level gives us knocks out eight of those levers. Excuse me, eighty hundred levers. Uh, 80 of those levers, okay? The last 20, they would give us a little bit of tweak performance uh, here and there, but they're, they are definitely not crucial. We can we can do images. We can do alt information for images. As a matter of fact, let's try that real quick. Was it this one that I had? There was a, um, let me see. I think, I thought it was this one right here. Yeah, so here I can make sure I have my alt image on tag, which is important. Uh, for screen readers and for SEO purposes. So when I this is published and I mouse over it, my alt information will pop up. My images are going to get indexed okay. And over on my main uh, my main agency blog, the um, I've noticed that Google actually recognizes the YouTube videos and it will tell me whether or not it's going to index those also. And in my particular case, I'm actually fighting. I'm not going to say I'm fighting, but when you, when you have a URL which has content on it and there's a video up here, Google wants to index that video, but it wants the video to mean the main focus of the page. It doesn't want there to be a lot of text around it. So I'm going to have to decide whether or not you know I want a blog post to be just the video or the video and the, uh, the text around it right here. But like I said below, ask me any questions. I still think 
um, high level is just fine and getting better every day. The page speed is pretty good. Let's see what the page speed is on this right there. What is, what do you guys like? Do you guys like GT metrics? I like GT metrics. Let's go. And by the way, I have not run this before. So this may get a horrible page speed. I have not run this through here before. Let's see what we get. Uh, we're going to pretend we are from Vancouver, Canada. I don't know how big that image is I shared right there, so I don't know. It may complain about that uh, when it comes to page speed. Uh, and then what else do we want to do? Oh, let's look at Google's Google page speed. Let's look at that one too and see what we get. Page speed insights. I am doing this live. I have never done it before on these particular ones. How are we doing over here? We're scanning over here from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, and by the way, when I where I would do my blog posts in WordPress, which I'm still doing for one of my lines of business, I would I would still do this same same thing right here as I would run my page speed tests. Are we still scanning over here? Okay, Lighthouse is doing its thing over here. Google's doing its thing over here. Okay, so I've got a poor mobile score, but my desktop score is pretty bad. Good SEO, good best practices, good accessibility performance. And again, you know what? I could I could bust my ass and work on getting a 93 or a 94. 92 is fine for me. 92 is perfectly fine for me. Oh, and then GT Metrics wants me to create an account. Ugh, that's new. Okay, well, we're not using GT Metrics today. But um, let me see. So I got some layout shift issues. I, that's what I thought I got. Uh, large contentful paint is always a challenge. And then some other things right here. But for the most part, you know, 92 is pretty good. Mobile, I could probably work on. And mobile performance, first contentful paint. So it looks like uh, more than likely because I just grabbed this image off of uh, off the internet. That's what's kind of biting me in the ass right here is the... Uh, is an old image format, old image size. But 60 is 60 isn't horrible, but you know, it's not great either. I would like I personally would like 60. I would like to get my 60 to 70 or 80, and 80 I'd be happy right here. But desktop out of the gate, using one of their templates at a 92 is just fine. So there you as the as the father would say in my big fat Greek big fat Greek wedding, there you go. Okay. The origin of the word SEO comes from the Greek word, yada yada yada. Um, I'm obviously far, far from Greek. But like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, get to blogging. Get to blogging, you sexy badass. I'll see you in the next video.